reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What it is I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to him, What shall I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I know that what I shall do so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first, he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here's your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another steward said, and you, how much do you owe? He replied, 100 quarts of wheat. The steward said to him, here's your promissory note write one for 80. And the master commanded that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth so that when it fails, you will be welcome into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If, therefore, you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and Mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Please Christ. Please remain standing. My brothers and sisters, we got here to celebrate the Eucharist and also the sacrament of confirmation for a number of uh, young people in our congregation today. And uh, I think it's also a good opportunity for each one of us to remember the sacrament of confirmation we received maybe for a long time ago. Remember, in order to collaborate with the Spirit to build up the church, to build up our Christian life. Let me tell you a story uh, you know, like Filipinos people, there are many, more than two million Vietnamese people living abroad, especially in the United States of America. And every year, Vietnamese Catholics in the U.S. organize Marian pilgrimage in Missouri at the campus of a religious congregation. I came there the first time more than 20 years ago, a large crowd. And uh, I remember on that day in the afternoon, 
I took a walk in the campus. I saw a group of young Vietnamese playing together. And what made me surprised is that they speak only English, not Vietnamese. And speaking English very well, fluently. And when I asked them in Vietnamese, they, they, they can speak, but with great difficulty. <laughs> like foreigners speaking Vietnamese. <laughs> you have this experience? They are Vietnamese. Their parents, Vietnamese. Their mother tongue, Vietnamese. But they cannot speak Vietnamese. Why? Because they're living in the US. And every day they have to use English everywhere with everybody. At school, with teachers, with friends, everybody. Not difficult to understand that. But the problem is how can they continue to speak Vietnamese in their mother tongue? I found two reasons. First, family life. Many Vietnamese parents told their children, okay, you're going outside, you speak English, but at home, all of us speak Vietnamese. And so day by day, they're familiar with the Vietnamese language. And second, community practice life. In the Vietnamese practices or in the Vietnamese communities in American practice, they organize the classes to teach Vietnamese language, teach catechism in Vietnamese. And so, many young Vietnamese not only speak, but read, write in Vietnamese. Well, I want to tell you this story to say two things. First is about the difficulty of living out the gospel message in a secular world. We are Christians. We are disciples of Christ. And we are called to live out the gospel message. But it is not easy. The story of a dishonest manager in the gospel today is an example. Not easy. It is not easy to live out the spirit of Poverty in a world that adore mammon, money, money talk, money teach everything. It's not easy to leave out the call to chastity in a society that adore sexual pleasure. It's not easy to live out the honesty in a society that lies, violence, reveal. And I think all of us have this experience. And this is why we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is why we celebrate the sacrament of confirmation today. Because through this sacrament, 
we receive the power of the Holy Spirit that help us to be against the temptations, to overcome the temptations, to become true disciples of Christ, and to become witnesses of the gospel in our daily life. And second thing I want to share with you is about the importance of family and community life in our Christian faith. Vietnamese children can learn to speak Vietnamese even though they're living in the U.S. because at home, their parents, their brothers and sisters, Everybody at home speak Vietnamese. Likewise, Catholic family and Catholic community is very important. Important to help our young people to understand, to profess, and to live out the gospel message in our everyday life. That's why I like to thank you, parents. I thank you because you are so busy with your work every day, but you don't forget your responsibility. The responsibility of a Catholic parents who is aware of transmitting Catholic faith to our children, to the next generation. That's why I want to thank you, sponsors, because you are willing to accompany these young people on their pilgrimage of faith. And that's why I want to thank you, priests, sisters, God kiss, because you help these young people to understand the meaning of our Christian faith and help them to express their faith in our daily life. And now, my brothers and sisters, we begin to celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. Please pray for these young people today.